you got your first shot? I did. <laughs> we will be with you in about five minutes. So, tune in. As you get a new indestructible one. It ain't all simple like this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Arthritis. I, I found something that works, though. <clears throat> Turmeric. It's been processed. It's the only way I can. How are you, Mr. Bob? Wonderful.
You get your truck fixed? Fuck. It is that time. You best be working on it. Well, we're working on it. Go ahead and get started. Still. Still. How are you? That's what I get for being outsmarting myself. Copies or anyway, no, I'm looking at that anyway. I'm singing from that anyway. I said I said I called twice. I think I said I forgive what I said I just covers all the bases. Hurry up. The candles, they came with whatever batteries were in them from Costco. And we have had those for over a year. We use them fairly frequently, and they're still going. So, um, Cause we, cause they'd be nice I don't for, know. <laughs> it'd be nice for a night ride at home. It takes, uh, looks like double A's. Oh, good. Yeah, so. I'll find out where you got And. It has a remote control. Now I have two sets. And the remote control works with both. You know, we should do that. Well, let's go ahead and get started. <coughs> Probably a few more folks coming at some point. We're not used to gathering in person, but, um, you know. Uh, We'll try it again. <laughs> so let's go ahead and pray, give our day to the Lord, and then we'll get started. So Father, we thank you so much for this day, and we thank you for your mercies. We thank you, Lord, that in this new year and every day, Father, that mercy, your mercies are new every morning, and that you are faithful to us, and that we can trust you no matter what. You ask us, Lord, to set aside our worries and rather instead get on our knees and pray. And with thankfulness of heart, Father, to just let our requests be made known unto you. And then allow you, Father, to give us a peace that passes all understanding. And Father, we know that your peace guards our hearts and guards our minds. And so today, Father, as we get back into your word, as we come back together uh, for essential worship and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayer, Father, I, I pray that we would just, again, allow you to rule and reign in our hearts and to let the things of this world just fade away. Father, we're thankful that in the whole renewal process that <clears throat> you are also going to... Um, establish your kingdom in your timing. But you've asked us, Lord, to pray uh, that that timing would be quick, and also to pray for uh, our government, to pray for uh, the peace of Jerusalem. Father, and we, we do that as well, knowing, Father, that that can't happen until you return. And boy, we sure look forward to that. We know that your coming is near, even at the door. But until then, Lord, let us not be those that are worried about what is happening, but, Father, uh, concerned with what you would have us to do. So we give you this time and our day. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the verse for uh, the day, Lamentations uh, chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, says that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And boy, God has been very faithful to us in a very difficult year, in a very difficult uh, time, um, in a sense. Although there's been a lot of other people that have had it a lot worse than we have um, in this world. What we can say is that God has been faithful to us through it all. And boy, I am so thankful that we can just gather together and worship the Lord 
um, and just count on his uh, love and his faithfulness. <clears throat> that said, prayer requests, um, Operation Christmas Child, keep praying for that program um, and those kids. I haven't heard a whole lot about that yet. It'll probably take us some time to figure out where our boxes went, but keep praying for those kids. Um, if we think we've got it bad, uh, they have it a whole lot worse. Um, to be excited about something toys-wise and clothing-wise that can come in a shoebox uh, is a lot different than the economy that you and I have. So, yeah. Well, after being to the Philippines three times, you're right, Americans have no idea. Yeah, we're a pretty My wife worked for the Philippine government, and her retirement is $100 a month. Yeah. So it's a lot Same. different over there, for sure. Yeah, it is. So pray for that program. Pray for our nation. The Lord says that we need to pray for our leadership. I know that that's not always an exciting thing to do. Because we don't always agree with them. But he doesn't ask us to do that. He asks us to agree with him. And he says, this is what I want you to do. And that is what we should do all the time. Pray for our leadership. You know, the Lord's will is that none should perish. And how many is none? None. none. Zero. Okay? The Lord wants those people to get saved. But that can only happen um, if uh, the Holy Spirit... Uh, is invited into that situation. So we need to pray for the Holy Spirit to intervene um, in the lives of our leadership, um, even when we, especially when we don't agree with them, um, which seems to be a lot lately. Um, so keep praying for our nation. Uh, pray for the salvation um, of others, people that are part of our families, our friends, our community. Pray for them and uh, ask that the Lord would continue just to minister and, and reach out to them. Yeah. I would ask, if you all know John Mead, please pray for him. He's having a problem right now. He's a good friend of mine. Yes, we do love John dearly, for sure. I'm praying that he can do And even as we mentioned, pray for Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Um, we know that can't happen until Jesus returns. Um, and so, boy, I'm looking forward to that day. Um, but until then, we should continue to pray, continue to serve, continue to to minister to those around us. Yeah. Um, just, you know, something for me personally that I was dealing with is just change. Mm -hmm. and, um, just change, watching my, you know, my dad change as much as he is mm -hmm. with Parkinson's and and how tired my mom is. She keeps up with him. But she's tired. And she just keeps him going. It just, it's just like you don't have enough time sometimes to spend with them. You know, you've got to do your job and they've got to do theirs. And this even spending time with your dad, too. Mm -hmm. That change is hard. And it's hard to be away from them because it's like you want to make sure that they're okay. Yeah. All the time. And those yeah. little licks and stuff are good. And, and just also just pray for me because just with the change, I'm just having things that are tricky emotions I like need. And then I'm flashing out at other people because I'm going through things. And that the pain and stuff that I'm going through will be put on others. And it won't. Um, I just pray that they'll forgive me for doing what I'm doing, but it's just because I'm hurting. And I'm just trying to figure it all out myself. And um, yeah. and it's hard. Yeah. You know, it's just hard going through change. It's hard yeah, going change is not easy. It isn't. And that difficulty needs to be resolved in our hearts, and that is just part of trusting the Lord. And that sometimes is not an easy thing. It can be a very difficult thing because... We are the kind of people that wants to fix it ourselves. I'm especially that way. I'll fix this. We'll get it done. And, you know, but God is faithful to us, and He will. You know, but yes, it is hard to see um, our folks uh, getting older and uh, whatnot. But nobody's as old as Lou over there. So, <laughs> but. Keep praying for um, folks. Um, other prayer uh, requests, again, pray for uh, Peggy Schroy and her cancer, um, that that would uh, 
that would just continue um, to, to be treated and um, that she would be doing well. Again, for those of you wondering who that is, um, Haven Yates, who used to be a youth pastor here when we first came to Happy Camp 21, 22 years ago, something like that. Um, I think it was 22 years ago. Um, yeah, 22 years ago. Um, we're coming up on a church birthday as well. So anyhow, um, <coughs> it, it was, it's his mother-in-law. And so keep praying for her. Um, Alba, keep praying um, for, for her, um, even though we're not uh, worried about specifics there. God knows, and that's the important thing. Um, Jimmy, uh, we know that he got his surgery, and we pray that he will just continue to improve, um, that his back would uh, be healed. It's a lot harder the older we get to go through um, some of those things. So keep praying for Jimmy. Um, Alice's husband, um, Jim, uh, different Jim, keep praying for uh, his cancer. Those were the folks that come in the summer and do uh, some uh, gold mining and, and that kind of stuff. So keep praying for, for them. Um, keep praying for uh, Regina's uh, daughter and, uh, and that uh, family situation for salvation. Um, Frank, keep praying for his, uh, his treatments and his cancer to uh, just stay at bay. That his tumors would shrink and that you know, things would just, uh, ultimately, that he would be healed. Um, so keep praying for that. And travel tomorrow. And travel tomorrow, yes. Oh, okay. Which tomorrow, there is a winter storm warning from 4 a.m. till, I think, 4 p.m. But no worries, it's only over 6,000 feet. So. so there's no snow? Uh, not here. Unless you live here. Unless you live here. I know that it feels. Yeah, I got a big drive. <clears throat> I know that it feels as though um, you know things are are different um, and things uh, are a little harder uh, to get through. But keep hanging in there um, and whatnot. Keep praying. Um, shoulder replacement uh, for Debbie Jacobson. Um, pray that she can get through her. Um, the word I'm looking for. Her rehab. That's it. Okay. Um, Dan Bushy. I know that uh, he's home now. Um, and I'm sure that he is very grateful to be home, but um, that can still be uh, a, t a difficult road uh, for him. So we'll go ahead and keep praying for, for that situation um, as well. And for Dan, um, there's a few folks in Syed that are looking for some direction, some wisdom, some understanding. Um, so keep praying for them. The Lord knows who that is. Um, Zach Ablett, continue to pray for him. He's a young man um, with a surfing accident uh, that broke and crushed his C5 and 6. He's doing really well uh, in his rehabilitation. He is in Colorado at uh, Craig, um, and that's a, a pretty big name hospital uh, for these type of uh, rehabilitation and treatments. And um, it's difficult. I uh, saw a post that the family, uh, his mom, dad, brother, sister, brothers and sister, have to, you know, kind of head home um, and whatnot. But that kid amazes me. He is just so, hey, I'm excited about the changes in life. I'm excited to see what God uh, will do. And so keep praying for Zach that uh, he will recover. That he will recover from that. And have a full recovery. Um, he has exceeded all expectations, but that's the way God works. In fact, he was questioned just the other day. You know, how come you as a young man have so much hope and so much uh, excitement about a situation that would appear bad? He said, I'm just so excited to see what the Lord's gonna do um, that, I don't know, I'm just, it's all my faith in Jesus, and I think that's awesome. So keep praying for, for that healing. There were a couple of more um, that are uh, that are coming up, and we'll get to those um, here before too long. And yeah, we'll do a little adjustment on the sound thing until um, the new microphone comes in and, and whatnot. It um, it got shipped from Sacramento to Illinois, which is the wrong way. So, <laughs> but we did narrow down some things. Um, other things that. Or other prayer requests that are um, 
some of you know Jesse Hernandez, who was a medical unit leader here on a fire years ago. He has uh, COVID, and um, being a medical guy for so many years, um, it's kind of uh, interesting to see his description of COVID um, and just the stuff that he's suffering through and, uh, and whatnot. And of course, we know some folks here in town that have had it. Some go really easy and some go very difficult. <coughs> Um, but uh, anyway, Jesse's having a bit uh, more difficulty, so keep praying for him. Um, who is the other one? It's on my phone, which is right there. Um, maybe it'll come to my mind, but keep praying for those that do. And if you wish, post uh, your prayer request. We'll be happy to, to pray for you. But I'd like to request prayer for all of our protection. God's guiding angels and holy wisdom and his light to Absolutely. guide our path and mm -hmm. just the knowledge of his love and that he's working whenever we don't feel it working and Absolutely. just know that he's always there with us, above us, to the side of us, below us, around us. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Andy, um, this is a real, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, a lot of people think it's really silly and really trivial. But that's okay. I'm on the uh, app TikTok, and where people do like you know anywhere from 15 second to you know minute videos, and you know they get followers. And some of these people are TikTok famous, have like 10.5 million followers. Which for me that doesn't matter. Um, what mattered to me was getting a thousand because then I can go live. And I've been going live with prayer requests, and cool. it's been. It's been amazing, the different people that have come in and, you know, some, some of the people that I, I know personally, like from high school or, you know, my niece's ex-boyfriend from Ohio. It, it, was, it's, it gets exciting, but what's really exciting is there was a gal that, um, she's got a two-year-old, mm -hmm. she's married to a guy that in a previous marriage uh, has a 10-year-old, and they haven't seen her in three years. So her youngest daughter has never met the older daughter. And they were really grieved about that. And the, uh, the mother of the 10 year old was very nasty, very, you know, um, you know, would be talking in her ear when she was on the phone with her dad, you know, basically kind of monitoring and censoring, not letting her say certain stuff. And so they just asked for prayer. They said, we're going in for a court date tomorrow. You know, just give us, you know, we just like prayer. That we can reach a happy medium. That my husband can see his daughter, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, She's great. next day I was, Voice you know, going service. live. And I was, you know, praying. And this gal pops on and she goes, you're never going to believe what happened today. She goes, I don't know why. But right in the middle of like his ex-wife, you know, like bad mouthing him, all of a sudden the judge just stopped her, slammed down his gavel, and he said, "Well, you guys need to iron this out by mid-January, but in the meantime, she gets to come and be with her father for two weeks for the holidays." Oh, wow. And the uh, mother, rah, 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 you know, end of discussion. You know, this will happen, and so I was just, I was blown away. And it's really cool because every step of the way, um, she keeps on, you know, like tagging me in like different posts, so I get to see what's going on. And it's just, it's incredible. Um, just to let you know, I got almost 3,000 followers. It's really cool. Wow, you're famous. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think compared to some, it, but that part doesn't matter to me. Right. What matters is that you know people are so responding and people. different little videos that That's I'm good. able to do. People are responding, and to tell you the truth, I know this sounds funny, but if you know me, you're gonna laugh that I thought this was funny. But you can take snippets of somebody else's video, and then you can have a response to it. And somebody just took a snippet of something that I said, and they just totally slammed me and badmouthed me, and were just like, "This is just such BS," and blah blah blah. And I was just like, "Woo! All right." You know, because it doesn't affect me, you know, because I mean, I know that what I'm saying is the truth, but what they don't understand is when they do that, it has my name down at the bottom, like who posted it. So if people want to know what the full message was, they can go they can come to my profile and view the whole thing. So basically, they're just giving me a little bit more. 
free advertising. Yes, they did. <laughs> so, awesome. and I had a conversation. And here's the thing that I don't understand is he is, he totes himself as an ex-Christian. And ex-Christian. Ex-Christian. He has um, be, been deconverted. And he and this other guy, and it was a word that I felt like I got for this other guy that's in the same position. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I won't go into it. But basically, he asked me, started asking me all these questions. Why do you think God speaks to you and nobody else? He doesn't. You know, he can even speak through a donkey, as he did with Balaam. You know, you just got to listen. Anyway, through the course of it, you know, it led me to point out to him the difference between a believer and a disciple. And I said, if you've no longer a believer, then that's probably all you were, is you were never a disciple, which is a wholehearted follower. It is, because even the demons believe in Jesus. Yeah. yeah. So, so, But it's through a conversation, so keep me in prayer on that, because I was really depressed when COVID started, because I had just gotten the youth group back up and running, mm -hmm. and you know, a month and a half later, COVID starts, and so no more youth group, and you know, and as much as I try to encourage, I know that a lot of the kids aren't watching me on Sundays, and I, I probably wouldn't if I was their age, and that's fine. Uh, but, yeah. Not when you got Angry Birds and all those I know. games. Out there. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, but yes, we definitely need to just pray keep for, prayer for on that. Sure. And as things mm -hmm. kind of start to mellow out with COVID, hopefully that we can start youth group again. Yeah, at least a little bit here and there. Yeah, well, we're definitely going to do that um, as things have, are changing and whatnot. So it is interesting. We do hear a lot about COVID. We'll talk a little bit about that um, today just because it relates to uh, the topic that we're in in Acts chapter 10. But um, God is in control, and we need to trust him in each of those situations. Yeah. And just uh, something that uh, I experienced over the holidays with my kids' church uh -huh. uh, about uh, God's faithfulness. Uh, a family member had been praying for uh, an uncle or some some other family member who was very hard hardened and you know don't even speak to me about that below uh -huh. that kind of thing. Anyway, this person kept praying, kept praying, kept praying for years, literally years and years and years. And uh, <coughs> she heard that this family member was dying. She got there after. The family member passed, so she was talking to the hospice gal there. And she said, "You won't believe it." She said, "All of a sudden, he asked me to grab a Bible, and and uh, anyway, he accepted the Lord two hours before he passed." Oh, really? I had this incredible peace on his face, as we're all accustomed to seeing if we've been around and someone is going to meet the Lord. So, just just a word of how important it is. To never give up. God's always at work. Yep, always. Right up until the last second. Yeah. yeah. I got the, the um, same type of situation with somebody here um, not that long ago, where just a couple of days later, you yeah, know, so. um, they passed away after accepting Jesus. And I just said, Thank you, Lord. You know, so yes. Anybody else? Any other prayer requests? All right. Well, then let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for each of these names. And each of these situations that are on this list. And Father, we are so grateful that we can come to you, not with our anxieties, but with our requests. Knowing, Lord, that you are going to work in each of these situations. Father, we ask for your perfect will in each of these. And pray, Father, that we would um, just be understanding and confident in what you are doing. As we trust you with each of these. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come boldly before your throne and place these at your feet and just say, we need your help. We need the answers. We need the direction. We need the healing that you would want uh, for us. And so, Father, we just give these things to you, each and every one, knowing, Lord, that you are going to do uh, a unique uh, thing in each one. And, Father... Help us to remember that you are taking us from glory to even greater glory until the day that we are with you uh, when we get to see you in all of your glory. So, Father, um, just go.
go to work in each of these and help us to remember to pray faithfully and diligently uh, for each of these situations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, um, services for the week. Um, we're going to start the um, Revel Revelation study or the Rev study. Um, that'll be um, online at uh, my site, Kirk Eady. Um, and I'll do that um, more than likely from home. And as I had said before, there is a possibility that I could have to end the study quickly and go on a medical uh, um, call. However, I know you're waving. Let me finish. I am. <laughs> Um, Heather is going to stay in town, um, but if something sounds really bad, I'll get up and go. Um, but uh, we'll just continue to uh, study through the Word. And then Friday, uh, men's uh, prayer breakfast. Any word? Still waiting, Still waiting on, the, on, the, on the confirmation yeah. and the other cook. Well, that's, that's good. You don't want to have to cook by yourself. No. <laughs> so keep, um, keep your ears open for men's prayer breakfast. When that gets going, let me know. I will. And we'll post that um, on the, the church stuff. So, um, And then, of course, the crime um, study or our youth study. Uh, David is here today, and we will continue to do those here in, in uh, uh, the community center. And uh, that'll be Sunday mornings, 1030. So feel free to join us. Um, and uh, giving. Um, we've got the wood box. We've got the P.O. box. And we've got the, uh, the clicky box on, um, <laughs> on the, the happycampfellowship.org. So um, thank you for uh, faithfully giving as the Lord um, directs. And now on to amazing facts that will blow your mind. Well, there are only three countries in the world that don't use the metric system. <clears throat> the USA, as we already know, uh, Myanmar, and Liberia. However, Liberia is in a transition to the metric system, so there will only be two of us. So, um, boy, how special we are, huh? Isn't Liberia in the Middle East? <laughs> so, what's that? Isn't Liberia in the Middle East? It is. So, birthdays, none um, that we uh, are aware of uh, today, or that somebody didn't write their birthday down, something like that. But Now, we're going to go ahead, before we do this, um, and we're going to change up some of the sound because I guess it's not doing so well. So, let's dim. try making some adjustments. This isn't perfect yet, but um, we are we're getting there. So, hopefully, this change will... Um, does that help any? Hello, test, test, test. I'm going to wait for the screen to catch up. Oh, got it. <clears throat> but it is um, it's challenging. I'm not a techie kind of person. So learning to make these adjustments and you study and you see Much things um, a lot different. So uh, we got a couple of things, like I said, that are coming. But they turned around from Sacramento and now they're in Illinois. Um, Just you gotta love the, the postal <laughs> service stuff, right? But, um, you know, it, on a good note, if they don't show up in a couple days, then we get them for free. So, you know, hey, where God guides, what does He do? He provides. So, um, we'll make that slight adjustment there, and uh, now we'll worship the Lord. So, let's, um, let's do that now. <laughs>
Peace is such a wonderful thing, isn't it? When we can just sit back and worship the Lord and just know He's in control, it's just, it's so free. It's also good for blood pressure control. <laughs> Oh, 
With you, there's always a way. When it comes to sin, Father, you are our way of escape. Father, you tell us that when we resist the enemy, that he will flee from us. Father, that just simply requires us turning toward you, repenting of what we've done, and just moving closer to you. Father, I'm so thankful that you do forgive, that you forget our sins, that you have washed them as far as the east is from the west. You have buried our sins in the deepest of oceans. And Lord, help us to remember when the enemy does come to just remind him that we are forgiven. And to, Lord, then give you praise for what you continue to do. Lord, help us to see you as the way maker, the one who can really see us through. <clears throat> and Lord, even as we start 21, and get into the book of Acts again. Father, I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to hear what you have to say. So we thank you. Give us ears to hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, you can turn in your Bibles or your devices to the book of Acts. And we will be in 
Acts chapter 10 today. And uh, I know I say this frequently, but I'll try and keep it short for you. <laughs> it's a longer chapter, but um, we'll keep it just to a few po- um, points. So, okay, here we go. Acts chapter 10. And this one is entitled, Ears to Hear. Aren't you glad you don't have ears quite like that, although that is a pretty cute little picture there. So, here we go. In Caesarea, there lived a Roman army officer named Cornelius, who was captain of the Italian regiment. He was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. Now, this is interesting because he worked for the Roman army, so you can say, wow, how are you a devout uh, believer when you're working for the government? You know, we tend to (laughs) think that about some of our leadership as well. But here's the thing. It's not up to me to judge somebody's heart. It's up to the Lord's. Even if they make mistakes and even if they fail, hey, have you made mistakes and failed? Yes. (laughs) So have I. twice. Um, So, maybe twice, yeah, I'm right with you. (laughs) But he was a devout, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. And I like that. He set the example in his own household. He gave generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. One afternoon, about three o'clock, he had a vision in which he saw an angel of God coming toward him. Cornelius, the angel said. Cornelius <clears throat> stared at him in terror. Uh, what is it, sir? Uh, not the usual prayer um, time when the angel shows up and kind of startles you there. <laughs> what is it, sir? And the angel replied, <coughs> Your prayers and gifts to the poor have been received by God as an offering. Now, send some men to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying with Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. Verse 7, as soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called to two of his household servants and a devout soldier, one of his personal attendants, and he told them what had happened and sent them off to Joppa. I like this. Even though he was startled at first, he understands that God is speaking to him through an angel, a messenger. That's simply all angel really is, is a messenger. And what does he do? He doesn't say, well, I need to think about this for a few days and and maybe put out a a few questions to the Lord, a few fleeces and say, well, you know, maybe this was from God, maybe this wasn't. No, he just simply took it as God's word and said, this is what I'm going to do. So he sent uh, his, um, his messengers. Meanwhile, Back in, uh, we have a a, a photograph of the incident here. Um, (laughs) Meanwhile, um, the next day, Cornelius' messengers were nearing the town. Peter went up to the flat uh, roof to pray. That's usually where they hung out. Hey, let's go kick back in the backyard. Well, there wasn't much backyard, so they went on their rooftops. Well, while he was up there to pray, it was about noon, and he was hungry. That sounds like Peter, doesn't it? <laughs> I like that about Jesus, too. He was always feeding people, you know. Um, so he was uh, feeling a bit hungry. <clears throat> but while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. And he saw the sky opened up, and something like a large sheet was let down uh, by its four corners. And verse 12, in the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles, and birds Then a voice said to him, get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, Peter declared, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure or unclean. But the voice spoke again, do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. Who makes it clean? God. God. So is it right for us to criticize something that God has said, no, this is what I want you to do? Do it. No. Can God change his mind? Because in the Old Testament, we know the the law was, don't eat of these things. But now the Lord is saying, no, take and eat. You can do this. 
And uh, can God change the rules? Yes, they're his rules to change. We are his people to change. So the reality is, is we need to be ready to do what the Lord asks us to do. Do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. The same vision was repeated three times. Why? Well, Cornelius, it only took how many times? One. But we know Peter. <laughs> you and I are Peter. <laughs> I don't know about this. I'm going to have to think about this one. Maybe I'll put out a few fleeces. And here it comes the second time. Lord, are you sure about this? Um, maybe I should think about this a little bit more. How many times did Peter deny the Lord? Well, three times. Peter is a, uh, the third time's a charm, which is, I think, where this, this kind of term started. The third time is a charm, you know? Yeah, that's kind of me. I am a third-timer kind of person. The same vision repeated three times. Then the sheet was suddenly pulled up into heaven. <clears throat> How many of you in the past, let's just say the past year, 2020, have told the Lord, no. No, Lord. I cannot do that. I will not do that. Yeah. Um, I have said that myself. Um, <clears throat> especially after the Lord has said, yes, this is what I want you to do. And yet you still said no. Um, you might catch that joke that's appearing there on the screen there. Happy New Year. Um, who knows the answer to that? That's uh, Malchus. Remember when Peter chopped off the ear? Yeah. Okay. Happy New Year. <laughs> Hence the term, you know, um, give us ears to hear. You know, ears to hear. Um, have I told the Lord no in the last year? Yes, um, I have. <clears throat> and there is that saying that says, never say never. Why? Because with the Lord, how many things are possible? All. Everything. Okay. Anything is possible. But, but where it becomes impossible is when I tell God no. And that becomes a very difficult thing. We talked a little bit last week uh, about Mary and her heart towards the Lord. And what did she say when the Lord started to do something um, very unique, very different. Uh, she said simply, but Lord, how is this possible? Because I haven't broken any laws. I'm still a virgin. How is it that I can become pregnant? And what did, what did God say? A, I'm going to overshadow you. I'm going to send my cloud of glory. I'm going to surround you. And just like I spoke this world into existence, I'm also going to speak into existence um, a new life inside of you. Um, you are the one that was prophesied. You are that. And what did she say? I am your servant. She just said simply, yes, Lord, I'm, I'm going to be your servant. And boy, there was great joy. And that really is the key to a joyful heart is just saying, yes, Lord, I will do what you, you have me to do. So <clears throat> should we ever say never? Well, this is what James says in chapter 4, uh, verse 13 of the book of James. Now listen, <clears throat> you say, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business, and make money. Why, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. <clears throat> Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All such boasting is evil. And anyone then knows the good that ought, if anyone knows the good that ought, uh, or that they ought to do, and doesn't do it for him, it is sin. Boy, our lives are really a vapor. I was thinking about this as my dad and I were driving, um, remembering some old memories and places that we hadn't been in years. We took a drive through there and just spent some time talking and bringing in the new year, just remembering and rejoicing in the Lord and, and just recalling some of the, the good times that we had um, as kids, even in some difficult situations. And it is interesting to see that, you know, um, when we were kids, summer lasted forever. 
But now that I'm a bit older, um, and when I go to medical calls and I ask the person for their date of birth, and they give it to me, and they look, dare I say it, around my age, um, and then I find out that um, I could be their dad, that, <laughs> you know, this life is short. I look at my dad, who's going to be 77 in February, and I say, he's not old. He might have some old parts inside him that aren't working so well, but he's not old, you know? This life is short. I don't feel like I have been on the planet for a long time until I hear dates where people could be kids and they look older to me. <laughs> but life is short, and we need to, in a sense, make the best of that. What is the best? Not saying, I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. What makes it a good life is when we say, Lord, if this be your will, I want you to accomplish that in my life. I am your servant. I want to do what you would have me to do. And so it would be wrong for us to say that, um, Lord, uh, I know that you said this, but no. It is funny. We started talking about um, things as I was thinking over this particular uh, chapter. Um, when we say no to the Lord. Things that in regular life, not in our spiritual life, but in regular life that we have said no to. Thought back to times when um, a microwave, how many of you have a microwave in your house? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people do. <clears throat> I know you're off the grid, so that would be way too much power all of a sudden. <laughs> a little hard on the, on the uh, off the grid status. But how many recall, because we're all pretty much old enough to know what it was like when the first microwaves came out. Do you remember what was being said? Oh, if you put that in your house, you're going to die of radiation poisoning and all these things, and yet... Don't did, share it did we? too long, you'll go blind. <laughs> yes, that one too. That's why they put that screen there, so that you won't look at it and become blind. How many of you are blind and have loads of radiation? No, I do, I there's, do. there's probably more radiation coming out of our cell phones, <laughs> honestly. So um, let's think of a few others. Speed. Back in the day, they said if you go over, I think it was 60 miles an hour, and then they changed that to 100, and then, you know, it just kept going. If you do that, your heart will stop. Or, better yet, they said you would go insane, even if your heart would stop. Crack up. Um, illnesses. Uh, they said that um, all illnesses could be solved by uh, a tobacco enema. Okay, that's a little different. No, thank you. Um, <coughs> it also said, the rumors also said that inside Brussels sprouts were little demons. And if you ate them, that you would uh, be possessed by demons. Now... I've eaten Brussels sprouts, and I can say, you know what? That may not be too far off. Those things are nasty. <laughs> okay, what about anxiety and depression? You know how you cure that back in the day? You stick an ice pick in your, in your eye socket. Well, of course. If you're sticking an eye, or a, a ice pick in your eye socket, you are going to completely forget about your anxiety and your depression. Why? Oh because gosh. the pain of sticking a <laughs> needle through your eye socket is just nuts. Um, what about redheads? If you were a redhead, the rumors were that in the evening, you could turn into a vampire. Yeah. So that explains a lot about redheads, right? <laughs> Werewolf. But you say, well, pastor, these are just kind of stupid stories and things. But yet that was believed by a lot of the general populace. It is amazing what we think we know and how many rumors get spread and things like that. Um, it's kind of nuts. Uh, do we have strange thinking today? Sure, absolutely. Um, we have, uh, let's just take the, the most um, unusual things. Uh, that we've heard just about the, the COVID, okay? Now, uh, we all have our uh, belief in that, whether it's true or not. Because I um, am in the medical field, I cannot tell you in the last year 
the amount of information that we have had from doctors, from government, from the CDC, from other foreign government. I mean, it's just, it is unbelievable. And a lot of it came to us, um, this is not for public release, you know. Um, so <clears throat> I, I know more about the COVID virus and the COVID vaccine than any other vaccination that I've ever had. How many of you know anything about the vaccinations that you had um, when you took them years ago? No. We just trusted the doctor and said, yep, yeah, that's it. So um, let's talk about some of the, the, the goofy things that we have heard. They shut down the beaches. Why? Because COVID could be, um, could be uh, received by you from the mist off of the waves crashing um, on the ocean, and then you would breathe that in and get COVID. Um, doesn't sound very scientific, but I can remember that report. Yeah. Okay, a lot of these you can't find anymore because they've taken them off of some of the sites because they were so absolutely ridiculous. Um, you remember, this one you will remember, they told us right from the get-go that wearing a mask will not help you. And then again, they told us, no, you need to wear a mask because it really does help you. And the only reason that we lied to you is because um, there wasn't enough masks for everybody. And, you know, I can tell you, I can tell you this. Most of the mask ordering, you don't just go to Walmart and say, hey, give me 100 masks because they didn't have them. You know, they say, oh, we were trying to help the medical people. Well, where do medical people get their masks? from the same place they always did. Was there a higher demand for it? Yes, but the general populace, you know, wouldn't have been able to have access to getting those things. So lying about wearing a mask or not wearing a mask seems a little bit ridiculous being that the average person say, Bob, you wanted a mask, you're not gonna be able to log in to any medical dispensary and say, hey, I need a mask. Goofy. So some of the stuff, and a lot of it, I understand they were trying to protect the people because they did not know what they had. Yes, coronavirus has been around for a lot of years. You can find it on bottles of Lysol. You can uh, find vaccinations for your animals for coronavirus from years gone by. Back in 2003, um, the first vaccinations um, of the SARS and MERS, which is what develops after you have the coronavirus, those have already been in place since 2003. So jumping to a vaccine very quickly for, uh, for the COVID-19 made a lot of sense. Um, it just took a little adjustment and then a trial period. Um, so uh, wearing a mask. Also, uh, going to Walmart um, or going to the pot store or going to the strip club is essential. However, don't you dare go to church and don't you sing because singing spreads COVID. Mm -hmm. So um, again, very, very silly. Um, other things that are just not possible, that the vaccine is the mark of the beast. It is not. I know that we talked about the transition because we know the Lord is coming back. We also know that there is going to be a mark that is visible to everybody, um, but this is not it. Um, I'm going to tell you that I took the vaccine. My arm didn't fall off. Um, as Dr. Murphy would say, I haven't grown gills yet. Um, and I had always said, nope, not going to happen, not going to take the vaccine. In fact, it was offered a couple weeks ago that should, should it become available in California, because California did not have very many um, vaccines available to them. In fact, the amount of vaccines that they had available to them a couple weeks ago was the same amount that in one day people con uh, contracted the virus. Um, and so for Siskiyou County, little Siskiyou County to get a vaccine, and I just said, and Heather, I'm not worried about it. I'm not going to take the virus. It's, there's a less than 1% chance of death currently in California. Um, when you look at the numbers, and we know that some of the numbers were skewed at the beginning, okay? Because um, as COVID went up, 
and I showed this to you last night in the statistics, as COVID um, went up, other diseases like we talked about have come down and the difference is about the same. So honestly, there's not a, not a whole lot of uh, difference um, there. You have less than a 1% chance of dying. So why would I take a vaccine um, unless, of course, God told me to? And so I said, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. There's no way. If they only have, you know, three or 4,000 doses, how in the world is uh, little Siskiyou County going to be able to get a vaccine? Just not possible. And um, sitting at home one day, and I got a text, and I am a firm believer in that where God guides, God what? Provides. Provides okay? And just out of the blue, because a couple weeks before, I had told uh, the county um, there's nobody really um, that we know of uh, medically that we uh, are going to take the vaccine. We're going to just kind of let it go. And the county was saying we're probably never going to get this thing um, until all of Southern California and Central California is taken care of. But then I got a text saying, hey, um, you're up for a vaccination tomorrow at 2 o'clock. And I'm like, what? I'm thinking, I'm not sure how I feel about this. And I prayed about it, and I felt like the Lord said, yes, go ahead. So I went ahead and took the vaccine. And you can watch what happens to me. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. I know that we're all worried about it. It's not the mark of the beast. Um, that it was made too quickly. That's not the case because the, vi the vaccine for animals has been around. And the human version has actually been around since 2003. But there was no demand for it. We just had to make some adjustments to it. So, you know, I got to applaud our president because he's not a sit back and wait kind of guy. He's like, if we can get this done, let's do it. I appreciate that about him. Um, no matter how you feel about him, hey, let's get the job done. And that's really what government should be about is getting the job done. That is going to change your DNA. And, and because it changes your DNA, Bill Gates is going to have complete control um, of your body because you signed it over. Well, I can tell you this, I never signed anything, um, and uh, I didn't have to, um, so I didn't sign away any rights because I took that. Um, that. Well, that has to be true because it changes your RNA. Let me explain this in a simple way. If you are going to get vaccinated for something, your RNA has to change. It has to. Otherwise, your body wouldn't have an immune system. Your RNA has to change in order to create that puzzle piece that says when a virus enters the body, like the flu or whatever it might be, we know what that is and we're going to go on the attack. Your RNA has changed because the vaccine has told it, this is dangerous, let's go on the attack. Even if you contract the virus, you get sick and you get better, you're going to have an RNA change naturally. Okay, So RNA has to change, otherwise you wouldn't have an immune system that there are tons of preservatives in these things and that um, you're going to have heavy metals uh, poured into your body like some of the, the vaccines from years past. None of the vaccines that are out there and available right now have any preservatives, which is why they have to keep them so cold. The uh, vaccination that is, I think Moderna's, is it has to be kept at minus 4 degrees. You don't need, um, you know, uh, that kind of, you don't, need preserv you don't need preservatives if you're going to keep it frozen. We do the same thing with meat at home or veggies or whatever it might be. You throw it in the freezer, how long does it last? A long time, except it might taste a little bad if it's not vacuum sealed, right? Okay, so <clears throat> there's no preservatives in this vaccine. Um, the other thing is, is that, you know, and this is kind of a goofy one, um, that... Uh, because there's heavy metals in this, that each one of us will become our own 5G hotspot. <laughs> now, the kids, if that were really the case, the kids would be all over this because then they can be on their phone anywhere, you know. But what is 5G? Does anybody know what the G stands for? No, it doesn't. It doesn't say. It just means generation. It's the fifth generation. 4G is fourth generation. 3G is third generation. As we go on, we find improvements, just like in battery life or any of that. So that's really what 5G means. 
but what are we really talking about? We're talking about radio waves. How long have radio waves been around? Boy, a long time the radio has been around. Um, in fact, if it wasn't for the radio and transistors and those kinds of things, we wouldn't have had not just radio, but um, communications with uh, like walkie-talkie or CB radio, or even now what we have, mobile radios, we wouldn't have television. We wouldn't have any of those things that we have seen in the last, you know, like, um, I think it was uh, the, the late 80s, 80s. The, the 40s that the transistor really came about. Radio came in in really changed. Yes, but the transistor really made all the difference. So, um, now, that was there a year later. You were about 10 years old then, right? Yeah. No, I'm kidding. But it all is about radio waves. It just depends on the wavelength. We know that generally speaking, wavelengths are pretty mellow. What they have figured out is what they've been figuring out for years. Radio has gotten better and better and better. Why? Because they can narrow the band. And as they narrow those bands, you can get more people on that. Otherwise, we, our cell phones would be... We, there's no way that we could carry a smartphone if that didn't change. My phone has more memory than my first really good computer, mm -hmm. by far. Mm -hmm. And so as we continue to, to move forward in this radio wave technology, 5G that is coming up, is, oh man, but 5G has caused the coronavirus. Well, if that were possible, um, I would say, uh, you know, you could look into it and say, yes, it's diminished your immune system so that you could catch something else. But how many cities last January, when we really knew we had an issue with coronavirus, how many cities in the United States of America actually had access to 5G? Not the advertisements that you see on TV where they turn the whole thing pink because that's their intention, or red, or whatever color that company stands for. But how many cities actually had any 5G capability in January of this year? 30. 30. Is 5G available everywhere? No. So if you're getting coronavirus from 5G, then America would have virtually nothing. So it's just not, not really possible that a radio wave will actually create a virus, okay? And now it can um, cause some other uh, problems and issues, but it's probably not going to be radiation or any of those other things. <clears throat> Here's the thing. When it comes to some of this stuff, realize what the Scripture says. Unless these things become fulfilled, and we'll get into some of that in um, our Rev study, unless these things be fulfilled, is the Lord going to come back? No, they have to be done. They have to be fulfilled. Well, the other thing that we're told to be is not anxious. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So whatever man can create, what's the worst thing that could happen to you? You die. Yeah. And what is the benefit of our death as believers, as Christians? Being you know, with God. <laughs> we get to leave the world behind. <laughs> we get to just leave this, and we get to go into perfection, to stand in the glory of God, to be completely fulfilled with joy unspeakable like none other. So... <clears throat> be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and let the peace of God reign in your heart. Don't worry about the COVID. Don't worry about some of that stuff. If you want to take the vaccine, take it. You might be sick on the second dose for about two days, but nowhere near what some people have been getting with the real or actual virus. I've got friends that have been sick for hours, and then good friends that have been sick or that are now in the hospital and really suffering. Um, pray for, for those people, and pray for our government that chooses to politicize stuff like this. But, <clears throat> let's get back to our, our study. Because Peter tended to be a bit of an anxious kind of guy. Yeah, I tend to be anxious. I tend to worry about things. But the Lord would say, no, 
I don't want you to tell me no when I've told you yes, because where I provide, I got. I lowered this blanket down and I'm telling you, eat. Well, no, 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 no. That is part of our law. Notice that Peter said it's part of our laws, and I haven't broken any of our laws. God's not interested in our laws. He's interested in his law. And his law, what is most important? Not sacrifice, not all these other things, but obedience. I prefer obedience versus sacrifice. I don't, I don't care about your law. I came that you should have life, and life more what? Abundantly. So if he came to give us abundant life, then don't worry about some of these other things that take away from our life. Realize that he is accomplishing his will. He is coming back. And our job is just to simply say, yes, Lord, like Mary did, I am your servant. So here we are. Peter was perplexed. Not, uh, not a surprise. That's why the Lord had to speak to him three times. <laughs> Peter was perplexed as to what this vision could mean. And just then, the men sent by Cornelius found Simon's house. Standing outside the gate, they asked if the man named Simon Peter was staying there. Meanwhile, as Peter was puzzling over the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men have come looking for you. Get up and go downstairs and go with them without hesitation. Obey and do it now. <laughs> and what did he do? He did. He went down he obeyed. And he said, I am the man that you were looking for. Why have you come? And they said, we were sent by Cornelius, a Roman officer. He is a devout and God-fearing man, well respected by all the Jews. A holy angel instructed him to summon you to his house so that you can hear um, your message, or so that he can hear your message. So Peter invited the men to stay the night. And the next day, he went with them, accompanied by some of the brothers from Joppa. <clears throat> they arrived in Caesarea the following day, and Cornelius was waiting for them, and he called together his relatives and close friends. And as Peter entered his home, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, Stand up, I'm a human being just like you. That's right. When somebody bows down at your feet, you're not worthy. I'm not worthy. No, get up. We're no different. We're just as big of failures. Um, stand up. Um, don't, ha don't hold people in high regard or more high regard than they ought to be. So they talked together and they went inside where many others were assembled. Verse 28, and Peter told them, you know it is against our laws for the Jewish man or a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me. I like that. Who showed Peter? God did. Who has showed you? God has. Okay? Let God open our eyes. Let him open our hearts. God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. Verse 29. So I came without objection as soon as I, uh, as soon as I was sent for. Did he? Um, yes, he did. But did he tell no to the Lord just before that? Yes. Does he focus on his failure? No. He focuses on the obedience. That's what we need to do. Don't focus on your failure. Focus on the things that you did right. And remind yourself, do it right again. Okay? So I came without objection. <clears throat> now tell me why you sent for me. Verse 30. Cornelius replied four days ago, I was praying in my house about this time, three o'clock in the afternoon. And suddenly a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. And he told me, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God. Now send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He is staying at the home of Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. So I sent for you at once and it was, it was good of you to come. Now we are all here waiting before God to hear the message that God has given to you. I like that. This man is ready to hear the gospel, ready to go to church, which is essential. You know, these past few weeks of us not meeting together here has been very difficult. The lack of fellowship has been a little rough on me, a lot more than I expected. But 
church is essential. Cornelius knows it and says, we're here to listen. We're here to obey. We're here to hear from the Lord. Peter replied, I very clearly, I, very, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. I like that because Peter's eyes are opening. He's beginning to understand the vision. It wasn't so much about eating. It was so much, it was more about um, being with people that your law, my law, our law says you shouldn't hang around those people. Well, <clears throat> I see that God shows no favoritism. It's good for me to be here with you, a Gentile. Verse 35, in every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. Anybody can be saved so long as you fear the Lord, believe in him, and do what's right. Verse 36, the message, or this is the message of good news um, for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, <coughs> uh, who is Lord of how many? All. He is Lord of all. Verse 37, you know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. And we as apostles are witnesses of all that he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us whom God had chosen in advance to be witnesses. We uh, were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. How many people saw Jesus after he died and was buried for three days? How many people? Over 500 people saw him. That's a lot of witnesses. And in court in those days, how many did you need? Two. That's a pretty low amount. 500 is a lot better than two. Well, he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one. He is the one all the prophets testified, testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. And even as Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Holy Spirit came to all who were what? All who were what? Listening. listening. God gave us how many mouths? How many ears? Two. So we should listen at least twice as much <laughs> as we speak. Yes, Kirk, you said this was going to be short. <clears throat> I, I'm trying. <laughs> Even as people was, Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. Verse 45, the Jewish believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out to the Gentiles too. Verse 46, they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? Is God saving the Gentiles too? Listen to these people. They're willing to listen to God and change their ways and be obedient. So how can we not baptize them when God has shown us, God has directed us, God has commanded us that no one is beyond his reach. When that blanket comes down, oh no, no, it's not about Jewish only, it's about all the other people in the world that eat these things. You can go into their house now. If they offer you, you know, something unclean, eat with them, be with them. The most important thing is that you listen to my message. No, Lord, I've never done that before. I'm not asking you to what you've not done before. I'm asking you to listen and be obedient. The Lord is making a change. I am going to not just meet the needs of the Jewish people. I am going to meet the needs for the Gentile as well. And boy, I am glad for you and I. Because if it wasn't for the fact that God changed his, not changed his mind, but moved in a changed way here, because he came to minister to his people first, his chosen bride first, but I am so glad that he said, yes, now it's time because now I am saved. You are saved. The entire world can be saved because Jesus is Lord of all. Well, 
So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And afterward, Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days. So, Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. <clears throat> yes, amen. And it has been a good Christmas. It has been a difficult year, but the Lord is good. These things have to be accomplished. My job is to simply tell the Lord, I am your servant. I am going to listen. I am going to obey. I'm not going to worry about whether or not the COVID comes my way. If the door should open, then I get a vaccine. And you tell me, yes, I'm going to do that. If you say no, then I'm fine with that too. What is important is not the things that are around us, but what is inside us. Am I willing to have ears to hear? Am I willing to have eyes to see? A mouth that will speak. A heart that is filled with his spirit. Hands that will do the work of the Lord. Feet that will walk in a direction. My job is to say, yes, Lord, I want your joy in my life. I want your uh, will in my life. I am your servant. We should never say, no, Lord, but rather say, yes, Lord, I will do whatever it is that you've asked me to do. And that may be different for each and every one of us. Yes, what but yes looks like. it will correspond with the scriptures every single time. Amen? Amen? Give us ears to hear. Father, we do pray that you would give us ears to hear your word. Father, I'm so grateful that we have heard that you died on the cross for our sins, that you have sent your Holy Spirit to uh, be God with us continuously, that, Father, you indwell our lives and our hearts. And, Father, I pray that we would turn over every aspect of our lives, even like Cornelius did, um, and just say we're going to be obedient to do what you have asked us to do. But even if we fail, even if we are a Peter and we say no three times um, or have to be reminded by you three times or 300 times to do what is right, Lord, give us ears to hear and hearts and minds and mouths and eyes and hands and feet that will do the things that you have asked us to do. Father, we know that you are bringing us in this life from glory to greater glory. You are growing us up. And one day we're going to get to be with you in heaven. And that the things of this world are going to fade away in the light of your glory and in the light of your grace. Father, thank you for your faithfulness to us. Let us in return be faithful to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Amen. happy new year. <laughs> or New Year's, and uh, have a great week. We will see you Wednesday online for the Rev Study as we take up um, chapter one and part of chapter one. And other than that, have a great week. Listen to the Lord. <laughs>